Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to discuss a really really important concept, one that's known as electromagnetic induction. Now that sounds like quite a daunting uh, expression for what we're going to consider. It's actually a very simple concept but a crucially important one because it underpins an awful lot of other subjects that we need to understand really well. So I strongly recommend that you watch this video maybe a couple of times until you fully grasp the concept of what we're discussing. So electromagnetic induction underpins many other electrical subjects. It underpins generation, uh, the principle of inductors, transformers. A very, very similar principle also defines how a motor works. So you can see this is a really, really important subject that we want to fully understand. There will be a mathematical formula produced. This is an important one for exams. You'll really need to remember this. So let's get started and we'll see what that is. So let's have a quick discussion of what we've got here. Here we've got our very powerful permanent magnet. Uh, now you'll notice that uh, I've removed all electronic devices as far as possible uh, away from this so that they don't get damaged. I've not got any credit cards near here or digital watches because this magnet is so powerful it could seriously damage those. We've also got here a galvanometer. Now a galvanometer is a device that measures electrical charge but it has the added advantage because it's an analog needle there. We're going to see this needle moving but you'll notice that it's aligned right down the middle at zero because not only will this tell you how much charge is flowing, it also tells you which direction the charge is flowing as well, which is very clever. Uh, so it will deflect either to uh, the right or to the left when we move this through. So the basic concept that we're looking at here is how do we make electricity? Well, we know that one of the three effects of electricity is the magnetic effect. And actually, this is the way that we generate something like 98% of the electricity that we use is by using the magnetic effect of electricity. And this is the basic but very, very important principle. When you move an electrical conductor through a magnetic field, it generates electricity inside the conductor. So a very, very simple concept but a vitally important one, so remember that. When we pass a conductor through a magnetic field, we get electricity generated inside the conductor. Because what's happening is that as we pass the conductor through the magnetic field, the magnetic field influences the electrons that sit around the copper atoms and push them around the circuit. So first of all, let's just see this in action. Now this is gonna be a very small deflection that we see on the needle, but if I take the conductor and I pass it through the magnetic field, you can see there that the needle will deflect slightly. So for that brief instant when the conductor was moving, electricity was flowing through this conductor. Let's pull it back up the other way, watch the needle. And again, a very slight deflection going on there. So obviously we're only generating microscopic amounts of electricity at this point, but that's absolutely fine because it demonstrates the principle. Now, how do you think I could get this setup that we've got here to generate more electricity? A higher amount of electricity. Well there's a couple of things we can do. Watch the needle closely. If I move the conductor very slowly through the magnetic field, you'll see it barely deflects at all. It's just a very slight movement of the needle there. However, if I move it very quickly, we get quite a big jump of the needle. Okay, so that's one thing that we can change in order to make more electricity in the conductor. We can increase the speed, or more technically accurate, the velocity that the cable or the conductor is moving at. The other thing we can do is increase how much of the conductor passes through the magnetic field at any point. Now obviously we can't make our permanent magnet any bigger because that would be very difficult and it would also uh, make uh, for very, very large generators, very unwieldy generators. But what we can do instead is instead of trying to make the, the magnetic field bigger, we can actually pass more conductor through the magnetic field. So if we take our conductor here and wrap it into a loop like this, this is the tricky part. If we take our conductor and wrap it into a loop, so now what I've done is I've got four lots of conductor all together at the same point. Now if I pass this through the magnetic field, again, let's, let's move it slowly first of all. If I move it slowly, can you see there that even just with that slow movement, we're getting a very large deflection of the needle compared with what it was before. If I now combine the higher length of the conductor and also 
Uh, faster movement, watch what happens to the needle now. <laughs> so this is tricky. <laughs> watch what happens now. We're getting a really quite large deflection of the needle there. So what you can see we've done here is a couple of things. So we've changed how much length of conductor is passing through the magnetic field. So as we increase the length of the conductor passing through the magnetic field, we increased the amount of electricity that was flowing through there. The other thing that we did was as we increased the velocity of the conductor passing through the magnetic field, we also increased the amount of electricity that was being induced inside our conductor. So that gives us two very easy relationships between the induced electricity, or what we call induced EMF, and the length of the conductor and the velocity of the conductor. So we can see that length and velocity are directly proportional to the amount of induced EMF. Increase either one of those things, you increase the induced EMF. There's one more thing that we could potentially change, we're not going to be able to do it here, but we could change the density of the magnetic field. So what we could do is change how strong this permanent magnet is. We could put in a very uh, weak magnet and that would produce less electricity, or we could put in an even stronger magnetic field and that would produce even more electricity. So again, we can see that the magnetic flux density is also directly proportional to the induced EMF. Now what we're gonna do now is tie that all into a nice mathematical formula and that will help us to do a little bit of maths. So first of all, let's try and get our heads around this new formula that we've just introduced. We've got E equals BLV. Now there's no mathematical operation between the three letters B, L, V, so when they're written together like that, that just means multiply them together. So we've got B times L times V. Let's figure out what each one of these means. So E is equal to electromotive force, which we also know as a type of voltage, and that is measured in volts. And that's the voltage that is created inside the conductor when we move it through the magnetic field. We've then got B. Now B is the magnetic flux density, so that's the uh, density of the magnetic flux uh, in between the poles of the magnet, and that is measured in teslas. We've then got L, which is the length of the conductor that actually passes through the magnetic field, that's measured in meters, and then finally we've got V for velocity, which is measured in meters per second, and that's the velocity that the conductor is moving at. So I'm going to make some numbers up and we're going to do a calculation. So first of all, let's get our calculation down, our formula down. We've got E is equal to BLV, like that. So there's our formula. What we're then going to do is we're just going to assign some random numbers to this. So I'm going to say in this case, B is going to be equal to two Teslas. I'm going to say L is equal to 0.5 of a meter, so that's half a meter and V is going to be equal to, let's say, 5 meters per second. So that's what we've got there. So we put our numbers that we're using into our calculation. So we've got E is equal to BLV. Notice I'm going to lay out the formula every time I do a calculation, which is going to help me to remember it. So we've got E is now equal to 2 Teslas times by 0 0.5 meters times by five meters per second. So that's what we've got there. So we've got two times 0 0.5 times five, and that is going to give us a total of five volts. So E is equal to five volts. That's what we've got there. So you can clearly see if we increase any one of these values, so if we increase the magnetic flux density, if we increase the length, or if we increase the velocity, we'll see an increase in our overall induced voltage. So that means that the induced voltage is directly proportional to magnetic flux density, length of the conductor, and the velocity of the conductor. And we actually saw this in action. When we increased the velocity of the conductor, we saw an increase in the induced EMF. When we increased the length of the conductor passing through the magnetic field, we saw an increase in the induced EMF. So we know that this is going to work. One thing just to watch out for, as always, when we're doing calculations like this, if we were to get one of these numbers 
uh, with a multiple or submultiple in front of it, we would need to change it back into the base unit. So for example, if this was written as 500 millimeters, if we put 500 in here, that would give us a wildly inflated uh, voltage, which we would never find inside that uh, calculation. So we need to change it from millimeters into the base unit of meters, such as we've got here. So let's just summarize exactly what we've looked at today. There's a few key points that we want to take away from here. If we move a conductor through a magnetic field, we generate electricity in the conductor. That's a very important point. Another very important point to bear in mind is our mathematical formula that we've just learned about, E equals B L V. So if we increase the strength of the magnetic field, if we increase the length of the conductor, if we increase the velocity that the conductor is moving at through the magnetic field, we increase the induced EMF, the amount of electricity inside the conductor. Another key point to bear in mind is that we watched when we were moving the conductor through the magnetic field, we saw that the needle deflected. But if you're watching very carefully, you'll have noticed that it actually deflects in opposite directions. So when we move the conductor up through the magnetic field, it deflects one way. And when we move the conductor back down, it deflects the other way. Now that is a key point to understanding how AC electricity operates. In AC electricity, the current is constantly changing its direction. It's going first one way and then the other way around the circuit as indicated by the needle. Now this is a very common exam question. What's the effect on a galvanometer as we move a conductor up and down through a magnetic field? And of course the galvanometer will deflect first in one direction and then in the other direction. So that's a really important point to remember. So as always, we hope this video has been some help.